Today on the Mike O'Mara Show. Easily resaleable merchandise. Fur coats. Are fur coats as popular as they They're used to not, be? They're not, but I would you still. You were 1950s, I would Rob, still all love, the way. I would still love to buy my wife one. I yeah. think she'd look marvelous in a mink. You don't see anybody in fur coats anymore, do you? In my mind, I do. Okay, Rob Petri. <laughs> and I have ADHD. God, I feel like I'll never get back I on track. You do. I, I've got two people that do right here. <sighs> At least I'm medicated. He's not. He is. Okay. Oh, yes. boy, leave me Not I'm for his ADHD. No, just All to right. stay alive. Online theories subsequently spread of uh, using vibrating anal beads. Ah, I'm beginning during to the see match. the plot. How does that help him cheat? Helps How's him, it cheating? Helps him relax. <laughs> <laughs> All that and more. The Mike O'Mara Show starts now. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Hi, everybody. I had a real senior moment right before the show started. As yeah. I was saying, I'm only getting one channel. I'm only getting one <laughs> channel on my headphones. And Rob calmly explained to me, uh, well, you don't have one of your headphones in. <laughs> yes, you wear like side. like earbuds, and it was just hanging loose. So just, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Mike, I don't know about that. <laughs> Mike O'Mara and headphones silver. Uh, <laughs> anywho, welcome uh, to the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. Oscar is uh, dead. Is uh, no. pot villain today? Once yeah, he's again. CEOing. Look, here's the bottom line. I'm not paying Oscar right now. He's uh, out of the goodness of his heart. He's coming in here. We yeah. talked about that before. I told him you get to uh, poop on this show whenever you want to. Wasn't that's it just your the mother? Way it is. You and I are getting compensated. He's not. So that's. Wasn't it. it your mother who said that when you volunteer, you get much more in return? Well, let me just say, uh, you know what? Uh, the GoFundMe is going to begin for Oscar's salary soon. Yes. Uh, to get him back uh, where he belongs. No, he'll be coming back. He's not giving up. Uh, no, but but when he speaks, you know, and now I ask him for days off. Yes, and you are denied. But I'm not, you know, that's not real. You can tell him that. That's. Not real. I know. I if I want, I take. Well, you know, all of us. I think we've been very generous to our partners here on yeah. the amount of time that we spend away. I think so, and we and with that. We do more content than we've ever done before. Absolutely. So people should be aware of that fact. And, uh, you know, the fact that we are uh, grabbing the gusto yes. as much as we can on the Mike O'Mara show. Big show today. We got Nikki Diamond talking football. But uh, I have wanted to talk about this for a while now because it just uh, creeps me out. All right. It really does. Um, I went back and I found an old article about flash mob uh robberies that have been going on for quite some time yeah. now this goes back all the way to uh 2001 it says as the holiday season nears in the united states uh retailers uh are dealing with a threat smash and grab mm -hmm. uh here's one five people entered a nordstrom's in los angeles uh spraying a security guy with a chemical irritant uh designed for bears uh 14 individuals forced their way into a louis vuitton store in the chicago suburbs uh, between 80 and 90 individuals invaded a Nordstrom's in uh, Walnut Creek, a uh, suburb of San Francisco, uh, and got away with $100,000 worth of merchandise at a Sunglass Hut store uh, in the Del Monte Shopping Center in Monterey. For, it goes on and yeah. on. You're familiar with uh, Smash and Grab. Yeah. And I, I will tell you, it, I, I saw another one just the other night where... This apparently is quite organized now, where organized retail theft is a uh, big thing. And, you know, I'm somebody who you might call me left of center, but at the same time, when it comes to criminal justice, yeah, I, I don't know why that pisses me off so much. Uh, because really, you know, when you're talking about people that are doing this, uh, I think it's significant amounts of young people. It's significant amounts of people of a, uh, you know, a certain uh, socioeconomic level. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just goes without saying. But, uh, you know, the, the retailers that are targeted have a significant volume of high value merchandise, uh, particularly jewelry. Yeah. Designer clothing uh, or accessories, electronics, uh, drugs, 
all of which are uh, happening. And uh, So what happens is a substantial throng, a gang of some sort, goes mm-hmm. into a store, causes a distraction, they smash the glass, take the stuff and run? Is that essentially their, their game plan? And it can be done two ways. I think the way we hear about a lot of it is when, uh, like a Nordstrom's thing, 50 people just walk into a store. Right. And just start grabbing stuff and walking out the door. And there's so many of them that they, they can't, can't grab get, them. Yeah. Uh, people, I don't even grab anybody sometimes, but, and then the smash and grab, uh, I think of that in terms of a jewelry store. Yeah. Where people will come in, smash the uh, jewelry cases, you know, dump it into a sack and, uh, you know, you know, this is run based, out of there. This is based on an old grift because my mom, I think this must have been about 30 or 35 years ago. She was head teller at the Safeway in McLean, the Safeway International, which was, uh, you know, it was. When a, you say head teller, like a bank teller? Well, she all the money went through her. She ran the front office and all that stuff. So, so was it called head teller? Head teller was her position. Yeah. Okay, so she would handle primarily money. Yeah, and you've seen the sort. Of, sometimes they're elevated, but the glassed-in booth at yeah. the grocery store oh, yeah. where someone uh-huh. is. What would happen is they these gangs would come in and they'd work the East Coast. And uh, they would come in and stage some sort of either a fight or a fall or something that would draw attention that sometimes would require the teller to leave the booth. Okay. And then they would quickly climb over. It's not that big of a deal. Hop over the, yeah, the wall, right? And grab, open the safe, grab the cash, and run. And this Idiot. happened. This was attempted when my mom was on duty that she didn't leave her station and she was able to you know, stay there. The guy abandoned climbing and they called the cops. And this had been sort of like a ring that hit uh, McLean, D.C., even as far as Baltimore, I believe. Well, so it's you know, the same thing. Look, as uh, things become more unreachable in society, right. people become more desperate. I think I, I get it. I don't think we need a lesson in that. I, I, by, by the way, I don't justify any of this crap when it comes to that. I no. really don't. And th- this is where call me, uh, you know, you know, Mr. Law and Order, but I don't. I think it's BS. And I think it sucks, and I think you are taking from uh, from people. But crime and desperation does yeah, rise and, out and of and bad times. I don't times. care if it's a big re- retailer. If you do it yeah. for, to a big retailer, they're going to pass the cost on to people of like course. us uh, eventually. Um, but I wanted to talk about it today because I was wondering. I, I've always thought, how do you deal with that? If you, especially if you're like uh, a manager in a big department store, how do you handle that? But before we do that, I wanted to talk about the risks. So if you are in the retail game mm-hmm. uh, what you, and you haven't been hit of something like that, what, uh, you know, what are the risks involved? And they list those here. Oh, okay. If your business is uh, stock, high dollar value, easily resaleable merchandise. Fur coats. Nothing more important than yeah. jewelry on that one. Jewelry, uh, yeah. They can easily be carried away. During a robbery, are fur coats as popular as they? They're used not, to be? but I would you still. You were 1950s. I would Rob, still love. I would still love to buy my wife one. I yeah. think she'd look marvelous in a mink. Rob, they're aren't they totally passe now? For, uh, you don't see anybody in fur coats anymore, do you? In my mind, I do. Okay, Rob Petri, <laughs> thank you. Uh, but it's. Would you wear one? A fur coat? Of course not. Not even like a Joe Namath one. <laughs> no, no, they're 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 passe. The last time I saw him, I think, was in the uh, 90s in Canada, Montreal in the middle of winter. You might see, still have a few up I'm there. I'm ready for the um, comeback. So here's, if you are, you know, I would say high-end merchandise. Mm-hmm. And that can be, uh, you know, a sneaker shop uh, where they sell. There's a little mom-and-pop sneaker place that my kid likes to go to. Yeah. They're really expensive now. You know, you get these sneakers that are collectible sneakers that are ridiculously expensive. Yeah. Jewelry, mm-hmm. uh, electronics, small electronics. Definitely you know, electronics, all that. yeah. Uh, here's the second factor. Are you located within easy driving distance of a major metro area, particularly one that has experienced significant numbers of these robberies already? Oh. So if you're in that uh, category, which so many people are, whether you're in the city, outside of the city, be aware of that. Is your business located somewhere where thieves would be allowed an easy escape route, route to uh, waiting vehicles. Those are the risk factors. You know, that that has also to do with the easier to blend in a city than a suburb, I would think. I like the idea, and I've seen it online with uh, some of the viral videos where they lock down a place, like you'll see the airlock, yep. and somebody comes in, and then 
it's bulletproof glass on both sides yeah. and they lock it down and wait for the cops to come. I think ultimately that will be the key to the whole thing. Well, where but, you but, hit a button and you lock everything down. But are you going to be aware of a do. smash and grab b- before is they now, leave? Now, do we have to differ- do we differentiate between smash and grab which is maybe two guys, three, four guys okay. smashing or a flash mob robbery which is So if it's I a think flash mob robbery, robbery mob a if bit. it's a flash mob, you're probably not going to realize all this stuff is going down until they're out of the building. That is true. So, so you well, can't lock I don't have it a down. solution to that. And also, uh, Mike, we we I can't believe you didn't bring up when you were talking when we were talking fur coats. I will withdraw my fur coat suggestion. Watches. Well, that's why I just said that. I said electronics and watches are okay. Big. Well, I just and, made, and, and I, I think watch those shows watch. all the time. Yeah, the security in a watch store, especially a high end watch store. Yeah, if you go, if you look uh, around the L A area, uh, the thing that got me thinking about this, I watch. Uh, this guy, his name is Producer Michael, and he is this super- Is that his super, given name? <laughs> that, that's, it's, it's everything you expect it to be. And he's a super rich guy, right. made his money in the music industry, uh-huh. and he, he goes around spending money and takes cameras with him and buys expensive watches. That's his big thing. And he shows you his uh, lavish, flamboyant lifestyle. Not quite sure what he's all about, but he goes into this one mm-hmm. high-end watch store and the very first thing, and he's done that a lot. He's gone to different places in New York, in Beverly Hills, that. And the one yesterday, I'm watching this. I say, oh, the guy's got a sidearm. Right on his side, the guy comes walking out with a handgun. What are you looking at? Uh, we had uh, Dan brought in a Celsius drink for Oscar, who's not here. Have and, Dan join us. And then, well, he's gone, and now Shannon oh. is here. Oh, sh- well, Shannon's busy, too. <laughs> Oscar asked to borrow... Shannon today, too. But she's, so I think she's it. in for the long haul. She brought in two yogurts and a water. Is she coming in to be on the show? It's Shannon, I thought Oscar was, all right, we got to get that two shot again, Mac. Yeah, and also to put for some me. juice in her headphones, please. Um, So I thought you were working. Can she hear me? Can you hear him? Yeah, give her a little juice that's in the good, headphones. That's good, Okay. Um, I thought you were working with Oscar today. Turn it down a little bit, though. I thought he needed you today. Well, I said, look. Don't get me excited about my big debut and then rip it away from me. You like being here. Sorry? You like being here. Yeah. May, and- I, may okay. I play her in? Yeah, go ahead. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen, sitting in for her child. hubby. Yes. Who is uh, podvilling today. Yes. Uh, Shannon, you, you just you got in a little late, but we're talking about uh, smash and grab. Smash and grab flash mobs uh they've had it in dc they've had it where you live in your hometown uh where they go in and they do this stuff and it's really uh watching one of these viral videos where the watch store owner had a sidearm it made me think about how we are probably in the middle of more of this stuff than we've had in many many years where and i'm talking about by volume we've always had you know crime's been a thing ever forever but Lately, especially with flash mobs, that's kind of the last couple of years, right? You know who might Rob? have the solution is and it Costco. They're well, they are known for their the best security, but I don't think an eighty year old person uh, putting a uh, sharpie through a receipt is going to necessarily prevent all of it. But I but let's get to that. In okay, a second. I think they uh, can get them while they're waiting in line to get out. So we mentioned uh, high-end merchandise, right. close to a metropolitan area, uh, easy in and out for thieves. Right. Uh, these factors may indicate an increase. And this is an old article for uh, experiencing this type of incident. Not having one or more of these present doesn't mean your risk is zero. But as with any crime prevention measures, the steps taken to protect a business against these crimes should be aimed at reducing the attractiveness as a target while uh, not an effective law enforcement strategy. And by the way, I'll throw, I digress here a little bit, mm. moving us more and more towards online commerce anyway. Of course. Like we weren't all there before. And then they can steal That's it from your it. porch and they never have to leave their neighborhood. Yeah. I mean, mm. it's the way it goes. Georgetown, yeah. where uh, Shannon lives, that is a classic example of where you would have a high-end retail mm-hmm. close to the middle of a city, and you might have this kind of activity happen. Uh, I'm sure it's happened, but I yeah. haven't. I haven't heard of anything in L.A. 
is where yeah. I think LA, San Francisco. Yeah, a lot of your stuff was West this. Coast stuff. Yeah, but uh, I would also like to just say that I yes, think turn her uh, mic up for me a little yeah. bit. Ever, so <clears throat> put give me some gain and some trim. Right, Thank right, you. right. Hit me. Mm-hmm. He's right. I sound like a child. Well, I didn't I'm, exactly. Give me some bass. I didn't exactly expect you today. No, but dear. for myself, like uh, yes, I just I need understand. to hear. I need to feel All like right. an adult. Okay. You're fine. You sound good now. You no, but this good. is no, Mike. You don't even know. This is what they do. They gaslight me. I hey, don't. No, I'm serious. Give me some more gain and trim. You just like you just like tur- turned me down a little bit. All right. I think you like. I did not turn you down. You wanted you bass. Go. I gave you bass. <laughs> Now you want some of this? One, two, three, one, two, three. Is this two, ADD? Give is me this more. Shannon's ADD give me, give me, right give me, give me, now? Me. You may is not this... touch my board. What do you okay, want? Okay, but is is it even on me? It sounds great. All right, it sounds fine, great. It, it right. really, really I, does But I digress, sound yes. You were saying something about certainly the do. I like to say things with gusto, and I yes, need to I be understand. able to be heard. Okay, I mm-hmm. so I think that during the pandemic, you know, there were there were there there was a lot of like, you know, looting, but I always try to- You always said you were sorry, though. Okay. I wasn't. That was a lie. <laughs> All right, stop it. I'm now, never you know, sorry. I don't need I know. Her don't interrupt me, man. Complaining about audio and then Especially, you do checky. Uh, yeah, and I have ADHD. God, I feel I'll like I'll never get back I on know track. You do. I, I've got two people that do right here. <sighs> At least I'm medicated. He's not. He is. Okay. Oh yes. boy, leave me. Not I'm for his ADHD. No, just All to right. stay alive. So, mm-hmm. I think that it's uh, like I. I just want to. I try to be mindful of the fact that. People who are looting, typically, they, I mean, they need it for one reason or another, whether they're going to, like, hawk this stuff so that they can put food on their table. At least that's what I like to believe. So I try not to be too, you know, judgmental Yeah, and I think in many cases, Shannon, you're you're right about it, but in many cases, you're probably... Uh, getting people that don't need it, that no, are I young, see, I see that looters. are doing the, the dumb kid stuff, you know, that they, hey, this will be fun to go into a Nordstrom's and walk out with merchandise. I, are there people yeah, that are being- It's a crime of opportunity, yeah. I think, for most, especially looting, because but that's not organized a, like a there, smash There's a uh, stupid kid factor. Yes. I, I would assume, uh, you know, you're not getting 30 and 40 year olds doing this. You're getting kids that are doing sure. it. That's true. Sure. So that it falls into that ca- no, category as absolutely. well. Absolutely. But I, I did like what you said about how this is pushing us more toward e-commerce. So, I mean, I think that it's also part of like the evolution of business and how the retail stores, I mean, they become so much more expensive to run, you know, whether it be your lease or your, you know, in-person staff and then the the turnaround with that, having to retrain people, having to get additional security now. So I think it's a matter of like, you know, evolve or die. You know, I I said to my son, and we're having a discussion yesterday, and I said to him, uh, and and pardon for the heavy, but we do, we talk about stuff and it just, it's been on my mind for a while and I wanted to talk about it. And what I said to my kid, because we were talking about this very subject, Where'd she go? She went to get the dog. This is my dog. His name is ADD. I'm listening. I'm, I actually am listening, though. You really do have trouble focusing. Going. <sighs> you have no idea, Mike. Oh, uh, that's right. That's right. Mira. I like you. Mira. Right, it doesn't matter. You can do anything you want. Um, so I'm talking to my kid about it, and I said that I understand where the law and order people are coming down. Mm-hmm. I understand where the people that are talking about socioeconomic conditions and and this and there the problem we have in America right now in my opinion is that there are these dividing lines where the people so many of the people that are law and order lock them up throw away the key don't put any emphasis whatsoever on the socioeconomic right. uh, problems that people have and the people that emphasize that well these people come from a difficult situation, in many cases, don't ignore completely the law and order side. And I think that that what lies in the middle, I said to my kid the other day, I said, one of the things that I have a problem with in our country, I don't think that we do a very good job of taking care of each other, of lifting each other up. So I've got that. At the same time, I don't think we do a very good job of making crime absolutely uh something that 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 
has to be deterred. We don't deter it. Mm. You're not going to, and you're not going to get it by putting people in jail. I've, I've always believed that jail is the, uh, you know, it's the classroom for criminals. I still believe that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you don't just throw your hands up in the air and say, oh, well, they got it rough. No, F that. I, I, there are plenty of people in bad uh, economic straits and in bad neighborhoods that don't go out and participate in a smash and grab mm. or in a flash mob. And more specifically, when I'm talking about the flash mob, that makes me think of the group of kids that are doing this. Yeah. And the deterrent is not to, you know, throw them in jail, throw away the key. And what we do in this country is we argue about a bunch of my old fart friends down <laughs> here. Uh, you know, say, hey, Mike, I uh, got classic example. Right. A uh, guy says to me, because they know my politics, says to me the other day, hey, Mike, we're thinking about going down to the uh, water waterfront shops and uh, doing a smash and grab. You want to come? And I don't know why this dick was directing uh. at me, but I but I do know why he was directing at me, because he probably thinks because I am a certain way politically mm -hmm. that I'm going to say, oh, you know, you don't understand. No, I'm not going to say that. I think if you do that, you're you've got bad uh, bad thoughts, bad character. You're a bad person for doing it, and you need to be. And at the same time, there has to be more of a deterrent. Whereas I also get the fact that people that do this aren't necessarily always coming from the best background in the world. They've sure. had probably a tougher life than a lot of people, including the uh, lily white folks that are sitting at the uh, country club, can respond to. But you get all of this stuff where. I watch society as things are becoming more and more unreachable. And as they're, and that's not for people that are in uh, bad neighborhoods. That's, that's everybody. That's for everyone, absolutely. Yeah. That's everybody. Yeah. Everything's becoming more uh, re unreachable. And now with inflation, you're seeing the real separation yeah. yes. of all of us here and the, the elite up here. So getting back to that, and I'm sorry to, to go off on a tangent here, but uh, one of the things that you could do, and I'm, I'm, this is out there for people that want to avoid this type of thing, because I'm sure there are many listeners of this show that live it, are worried about it, and how do you do it? Well, uh, one of the things uh, should be geared toward reducing the attractiveness of the location by limiting the visibility of high-value goods. <laughs> Well, it's, you, it's easy to say that, but you say, well... You're a retailer. You yeah. need retailer, to, you you just got to sell it. Yeah, you got to show right? your wares, right. Well, and yeah. you, if you're a high-end retailer, I mean... Yeah, <laughs> I mean, right? What yeah. are you going to do? Well, you, you know just, what? Again, here is something where Costco kind of has a good idea. What they'll do is they will have... Now, you sound like you're in the, the middle of a uh, wind tunnel. I'm sorry. Okay, well, I'll fix it. Hold yeah, on. But I'm just you. saying that the fact that... Well, it's because he's not talking directly into his mic. It's all like this. And he's like, hey, hey, guys. Sorry, Rob. Not as sorry as me. Okay. So uh, Costco, they will have the gloss, the, glass, the gloss case locked up with your watches and your rings and stuff. Right. But if you want it, you have to fill out a small piece of paper. Yeah, go but that's not going to stop a smash and grab. Yeah, that's a, you still but get I mean, that. Costco, psh. you're talking about the, Costco security is known. Yeah, as far as, 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 far as like, business. as far as just like, you know, looting or taking or a mob coming in and grabbing a lot of stuff. Right. That's a good way to defeat that. Yeah. Um, but I wonder if it, there's got to be a way to have unbreakable glass. That sounds well, stupid. But so yeah. before, we, before we come up with our own ideas, let me, let me do this. Um, what you're talking about is a store hardening the store's outer envelope with either roll-down gates, which can be quickly deployed, mm -hmm. or by use of laminate or other burglar-resistant glass in doors and storefront windows that resist breakage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's probably going to be the way of the world. Yeah, got to be, um, yeah. That this may prove particularly useful in a shopping mall setting where there's significant uh, distance between uh, parking and target areas. It may be difficult to identify. Uh, no, they're talking right now about identifying the mob before they come in there. It may be difficult to identify smaller groups of criminals uh, in the gathering uh, of a large mob of 20 to 100 people wearing face covering and carrying burglary tools uh, staging in the shopping center's parking lot. It may be able to identify prior to entry. So I guess that's what, having cameras out there to uh, to look at this? I it's guess. kind of all over the well, place with Well, having that. employees who are vigilant. I was in mm -hmm. a Toomey 
recently. What is a Tumi? Tumi is a uh, luggage handbag. Sorry. Okay, a leather, uh, leather goods. Store. Yeah, right. And vinyl. Um. So and anyway, I was in a Tumi, and suddenly I hear this lady. I'm not even paying attention to her, but this lady is like, "Sir, that is not your bag." And I was like, "What? What's going on?" And she goes up to him. She rips it out of his hand. This guy had just walked in. It was in in a shopping mall, and he he like started walking in. Um, and, you know, just kind of acting like he's like, you know, just window shopping, essentially, and picks up this very expensive bag and just starts walking out. And as she said that, he was like, I guess he, he mumbled something about like, you know, going to like show his family member who's right outside of the store. OK, mm-hmm. so, she so he like, had a prepared response. Well, they for have it. to come in here. And then one of her um, one of her colleagues was like, yeah. Give mm-hmm. her a high five. Oh, because she foiled a burglary. But, yeah, I mean, this lady. Scary, I, though. I couldn't Scary believe she did it. Scary when you have to do yeah. that, right? You're, I, mean, I mean, this is just, this is all what I can comment to that. When I was training to work in a grocery store, they said, never confront or try to stop a shoplifter. It's not worth it. That's why I was shocked she did it. Yeah, it's, uh, that's, um, that's uncommon. She was an older broad. <laughs> Brassy she got broad? Fire. A she grizzly got some fire. old broad. You know who it was, Mike? That. It was television's Holland Taylor. Right. From the, from the morning show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they go on to talk about design of the retail outlet. Yeah. Staffing with security employees. Uh, a business should utilize elements of crime prevention through environmental design to uh, reduce its attractiveness to those planning that type of robbery. Again, easier, include, said, easier said than done, though, if the show is... Well, and expensive. Yeah. Uh, extensive use of glass to allow for visual surveillance of the parking lot by those inside uh, and of inside activity by passersby. And loca- God, this is so badly written. I apologize, but it's a security blog and okay. it's just all over the place. Uh, staffing people, uh, the most effective long term solution. Retailers should proactively work with local uh, prevention coalitions and local law enforcement to identify and prosecute not only those committing the robbery itself, but any organizers and those involved in the pipelines. Most importantly, no amount of merchandise is worth an employee's life. Right. So employees should be trained to either not intervene or to intervene only in non-physical ways. Uh, we'll see what happens with this, but I don't know, and I haven't read or heard a lot about implementing this. Right. You know, because also you're talking about confronting somebody as a store employee that might, you know, be carrying some sort of weapon. If you bring down the gate and you don't have another gate, you know what I mean? Yeah. The the, the airlocks in convenience stores are designed to lock one door and lock the other door, yeah. trapping the person in there. I've seen people actually try to shoot through the glass when they are trapped in that situation. Mm-hmm. So the idea of a flash mob. And you just have to secure both sides. Yeah. And what do you got? Twenty feet in there or something? It's it's a if very that. very difficult situation. Are you hearing about any of this action going Wait, on in your? Part? That's why you shouldn't be allowed to just carry around firearms willy nilly. Well, I mean, you're talking that's why about I wouldn't a totally be in, different thing. Yeah, but I know. would. But but that's what you're talking about. You're saying that if somebody has a firearm, you know, if if people are allowed to just well, like the criminals aren't going to pay attention to carry the rules. concealed weapons. But then next thing when, you know, you're shutting, you're locking people into a you store know, high with, with, stress. That have, that have yeah. Yes. Now, so so there have to be solutions for it, but I'm just thinking that we, uh, before you can tackle the big issues that we've been working on for years and years and years that nobody seems to figure out yet, which is uh, crime in the inner city, sure. uh, opportunity in the inner city. And, you know, you're hearing about these retailers in uh, certainly out in California and Seattle that are, you know, target stores, pulling up stakes, leaving that area because Mm -hmm. of theft prevention. And theft is a massive, down here in Fort Myers, every day you got a guy with a TV set rolling out of the Walmart. It happens Mm -hmm. all the time. In areas where it is constant, you're getting uh, retailers that are pulling up stakes. You know what? That's not going to benefit the area. That's going to ruin it more, you know? It didn't happen when we had tube TVs. Two TVs you couldn't carry. You know, now they're so lightweight with all of that. Seriously, yeah. That's I, so true. I think ultimately, of all the solutions I've read here, you're talking about 
the majority of your high-end merchandise being in a secure area where it's not on a showroom floor and you can't reach down and pick it up and say, I want to buy this, but you can show uh, one example of it, maybe right. behind a glass case, and that's just the way retail is going to be. You're going to see the item you want, and you're going to say, maybe you have a picture of all the different colors that it's in. Sure. And it's going to be behind a secure glass. You say, if you want that, a la Costco, you take the little card and yeah. do it. Yes, Shannon. How about decoy, decoys? Like, you know, decoy watches, decoy jewelry. So it's really like, it's sort of, it's fake. And if somebody wants to see something, then you would take them to a, a private room, like a room. private sitting yeah. room or something. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to get, uh, in the next year or two, you're going to start seeing more and more of uh, retailers do this type of thing. I hate it when I hear that a retail chain is pulling out of an area because Bad. that is, you know, not that's that's contributing to destruction and, of an area. That's the, taking away jobs. That's taking away people's ability for convenient shopping. That's taking away a lot of things. And from it's two pronged because when that Target or whatever box store landed in that environment, it pushed out all the other stores. Well, and mm-hmm. the trickle down of that is that the employees lose their jobs. Right. And then uh, the landlords lose their rent. So it's like, it. I mean, it affects all of us. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And look, I think in this day and age, the idea of having a, a retail outlet with 60,000 pieces of merchandise and you've got a little plastic tag on it. Yeah. I think that's just, that's going to definitely be. Uh, the retail of yesteryear. I just don't think you can do it. And it's a pain. It it's is. a pain in the ass. And I don't know what's going to happen. But as the inflation situation, as the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, you're going to see more of these uh, more of these type of crimes. And look, they're not the kind of crimes that are necessarily resulting in bodily harm, but they suck. And there's nothing I hate more than when I see a flash mob robbery. I hate it. It makes me sick well, to my stomach you, when I see it. Needs, we need to circle back. Mm-hmm. If you have a if you have a neighborhood and a Target pulls in and all the mom and pops close because everyone's going to the Target or the Roses or the Walmart, that's great. And then they but, have. But what about? Uh, sounds so far away. Does it sound okay in your headphones? It's perfect here. Yeah, he sounds good here. Okay, what do good. I sound right. like? You sound fine. Oh, sorry. Match your levels to mine. All right. Rob, you want me to do it? No. Rob, don't just sigh. We have to keep the show moving. I understand. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, but they so when that anchor store pulls out, it's not just the anchor store pulling out. It eliminates everything because everything that was there before is also gone, and it becomes a uh, it becomes a desert. You know, How there's nothing this? there for people. All right, now here's my radical okay my radical idea. All mm-hmm. right, all the merchandise, each section of merchandise, there is one item. That contains a high-powered explosive. I love it. <laughs> and At you'd least only ink. have to do, you, you'd have to do Something. it. What am I saying? Five, ten times tops. Yeah. Where the flash mob goes out, they take the big handfuls of stuff, and then kablooey. Kablooey. You know, yeah. Robber gone. Uh, that would you know, be that, the that iPhone sixteen plus plus plus. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, well, Mr. Bond, you'd have to put in a very small explosive charge. That <laughs> I expect would be in you there. to die. <laughs> I expect you to die. You take the iPhone 14 and you will blow your body up completely, Mr. Bond. I don't know. It just, I had to talk about it because I, I wanted to say to people, uh, you know, if I did any good with what you can do, uh, you know, the expensive stuff, but it just sucks. It is sure enough an ugly trend. I mean, there's no, there's no doubting it. Bad you stuff. should dump your old fogey friend, the one who made that joke. Uh, I, don't, I, I bet friends, he's not a friend. Acquaintances. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're acquaintances. Yeah. Now uh, we know why. But yeah, yeah, and uh, but you know, what am I going to do? What am I? It's it's the game I love. Punch him in the gut. It's the uh, I'd like to occasionally. <laughs> I would <laughs> like to. How about a smash and grab on his face? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what? I, uh, would you like to know the uh, retail theft that I've been a witness to for yeah. my products? Sure. Well, you probably don't even know this because neither of you are golfers, but I'll tell you what they do. They go into, say, a Walmart, right? And you've got a high-end, say, uh, Titleist golf ball Mm -hmm. dozen. Yeah. So you've got a box of a dozen Titleist golf balls. You get it up to the retail counter. They lift up the box to check it, and it's full of noodles. Noodle (laughs) golf balls. And I'm not talking about pasta. I'm talking about noodle golf balls. So they will go through. (laughs) That's great. They will take out all of the. Uh, they will take out all of the Titleist ones, right. and they will put it in the noodle big dozen box. They'll pay for that, 
and they're paying for, well, in many cases, $15, $20 less for their golf balls, and then they've got brand new Pro-Vs. Then when the guy wants to get his Pro-Vs, he walks up to the front, and he's got noodles. Yeah. Yeah. Noodle how, golf balls. How there much you know. are those? How much How much is it? 50 a, bucks now. 50 bucks for a dozen golf balls. 55 for the high-end Titleist golf balls. Gotcha. And how much for Absolutely. noodles? Noodles, uh, ramen, you could get. No, 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 they're the brand. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but much cheaper. It was, much they cheaper. did similar stuff when I worked at Safeway uh, in Richmond, which was right on mm-hmm. campus. It's no longer there. Uh, people would go down and, you know, the fake IDs were rampant anyway. But right. what would be great is someone would buy a six pack of Budweiser and bring it through the line. And I'd look and I'd say, huh, Budweiser doesn't come in green bottles. And they <laughs> okay. had swapped out Heineken bottles and put it into a cheap thing. <laughs> They've been going on for a long, a long, long time. The, and so it's flash mobs for the yeah, love of God. True. You know? yeah. I know. So anyway, we won't solve the world's problems, but, uh, you know, we can at least identify it. And if you're a retailer out there, uh, beware. 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 Yes. A lot of crime out there. A lot of crime. <laughs> and a lot of crime. A lot of noodles. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Hey, Mike, we're thinking about going to a smash job. Hey, I thought you were going to the A-hole convention. <laughs> uh, we'll take a break and come back with the roundtable. Uh, you are listening to the Mike O'Mara Show featuring Shannon Zabalios. We'll be right back, everybody. Oh, I got a lot of buttons to push here. Push them. Push them, baby. Thank you, Brett. Push I want to talk about back. Liquid IV. I uh, got it right here. Every single day, you can elevate your hydration with Liquid IV. What flavor? Hold on. Mm-hmm. That is lemon lime, my all-time oh, favorite. I love it. I'm, I'm I love into it. the I love peach it. right now. The peach it's is America's so good. Number one powdered hydration brand. Whether it's morning, pre-workout, post-workout, uh, post-party, during long flights, Hydration Multiplier has you covered. One stick will hydrate you fi- uh, fast, twice as fast as water, and provide essential vitamins and three times the electrolytes of leading sports drinks. Twelve. Count them. Twelve delicious flavors. Staying hydrated has never been more exciting. So join us in making a global impact. Liquid IV has donated 39 million servings across 50 countries. Choose Liquid IV for revitalizing and world-changing hydration. Real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TMOS at checkout. That's 20% off anything when you shop better hydration today using promo code TMOS at liquidiv.com. Release the Kraken, please. Thank you. All right. Speaking of the Habs having more and the, yeah. uh, the, the, the Lessers having lesser, uh, Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom are being accused of trying to evict a dying Army veteran from his home in Montecito, California. How could that result in bad press? (laughs) 83-year-old Carl Westcott served in the 101st Airborne. He now suffers from a deadly brain disorder called Huntington's disease, and he'd like to live out the rest of his life at at his house. Uh, In 2020, he signed a deal to sell it to Katie in Orlando, but he claims he was on painkillers for a back injury and he wasn't mentally sound enough to consent to the contract. Uh, they've been engaged in a legal battle for several years and Katie is scheduled to appear in court on Friday. Well, I mean, how fabulous Kate, could this house possibly be? That I don't I feel know. Like just let that old man live there. I think they hate America. Katie is no stranger to bad publicity. Almost a decade ago, she went to court to evict some nuns from a property she bought, and she recently entered into a trademark battle with an Australian designer named Katy Perry, who spells it K-A-T-I-E. She also has been gaining a reputation as the mean judge on American Idol. I don't watch American Idol. I don't either. the mean judge? I I imagine she is. I don't know. But you need a mean judge. Yeah. I I wish that Orlando would be more like his brother, Matt. Matt would never do that. (laughs) No, he wouldn't. Matt Bloom would never do what Orlando Bloom. He would never take up with the likes of Mm. Katy Perry. No, uh, he wouldn't. He prefers a celibate life. I just don't know. I I think, uh, you know, I don't know. And once again, a contract's a kind, you know, I mean, you buy a house. It usually costs a lot of money and you uh, you move in and that's it. But they've got more houses. How does an old war vet? Own a home that is like that's so desirable to probably a war vet who invested well or yeah. had a great job when he came back from the war and made tons of money in order. Yeah. You know, Mike, a... he could have been a war profiteer. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> Rob just turned him into Oscar Schindler. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Rob. We appreciate that. Uh, oh, not the bathtub. Oh, that's a good pearl. divider. I like that. God, thank you very much. Let me hit it again. God, everything is breaking today. Hold on. Here we go. All right, one, two, three. Hit it. 
one, two. That didn't take long. No. Uh, it's almost Sunday, NFL fans, and you know Shunday. what that means. What? An entire day of Taylor Swift. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Are you excited, Mike? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Taylor is expected to be in the house when Travis Kelsey and the Kansas City Chiefs take on the Jets at MetLife Stadium. Are they dating? Also, uh, <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> local for Taylor in New York. Yeah. By the way, it's also where my team plays, the Giants, but they yes. won't be there Sunday. Uh, Taylor uh, owns a place in New York City. I wonder if she evicted an 83-year-old <laughs> war veteran when she got in there. Uh, on the most recent episode of his podcast, yes, Travis has a podcast. Of course. He said it was, quote, pretty ballsy for Taylor to show up to last week's game. I applaud her. What? <laughs> I feel like this is, this is all a ruse, okay? Taylor Swift had been in a relationship for like, I don't know, six, four to six years. I can't quite remember. Mm -hmm. But I didn't even read or see or hear anything about it until they broke up. And now suddenly she's like going to, going to games. You know what yeah. she is, Mike? I accuse her of this. I accuse her of being a climber. No. Oh, that's hilarious. Did you know that she has been nominated? Like, no, but this is this. You is, mother she had to climb? She's climbed, my no, friend. No, he's, he's baiting us, okay? No, I'm saying that now she would not. You know what? He's Two trying, weeks ago. He's trying desperately he's to us. come up with no, a strategy I know, he's for like, backing oh. out of this. Two weeks ago, she was all over the place, but she wasn't all over hey, the NFL. I just dropped a sh uh, an S-bomb. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> and that was about to go squeak through. How? Rob, Rob, this is this is no, but all it, all, Travis benefiting from this. I know, but also it gets her attention to a different audience. She doesn't give she a doesn't rat's need ass it. about that. Dude, she, she wants everything. She wants everything. And she's no. got it. Did you know that uh, she's been nominated for over 1,300 awards and yes. has won 600, over 600? So there she lost is. 700. She needs more. Uh, Rob, I don't think he can spin out of this. This is the, the this. The okay, guy that's let me simplify the person, it to hold this. Hold on, wait. The person that's benefiting mouth is Travis Kelsey. Understood. And the NFL. Totally. Yeah, and the NFL is too. Oh, All yeah. right, then I say and this. And the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't like it. You know that their merch sales went up by 400%? Yes, we mentioned that on the show. It's crazy. It's not that I, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that I don't think it can end well. I, I hate to say that, but, uh, you know, the fairy tale in this uh, situation, I just don't think it's going to end. I heard well. that Taylor Swift is a war profiteer. Do okay. you do you remember when uh, tr when, I don't know if it there was like a was it catching Kelsey or something? That, I don't know if it was. Yeah, there Travis? was a, there was a dating show where he talked about uh, going on three dates and whether a woman should put out after three dates. Oh, he God. talked about. He talked about that special uh, uh, favor. Were they all naked that. on the show? No, we'll oh get God, to that. Oscar oh my God, Oscar showed me that show this that. morning. Okay, hold the hold the, <laughs> hold your powder, hold your powder. We got it. We got to talk about okay. it after this break. Uh, so everybody was talking about uh, Taylor in a great light. On top of that, she said the day went perfect for uh, Chiefs fans. Uh, we script it all, ladies and gentlemen. It was just impressive. That's what Travis said. So he's glowing and gushing about his uh, lady. That's it. I don't uh, like now, it. Now, thank you. You've made your point. <laughs> thank you. Uh, now that the writer's strike is over, late night TV is coming back, which is great. Yes. Uh, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, Seth Meyer, Stephen Colbert all return this coming Monday night. John Oliver's uh, Last Week Tonight returns to HBO Sunday, Real Time with Bill Maher is returning Friday night on HBO. They're not wasting any time. Uh, the Daily Show will also be returning, but not until October 16th. It will have guest hosts through the rest of the year. Way to go, Suits. Way yeah, to go, well executives played. not doing your job. Thanks so much. Uh, spokesman for The Daily Show, Chris Kynard, said that. No, no, no I'm sorry. not no, his name. No, I'm kidding. I'm making a little <laughs> joke. I'm sorry. It uh, was out of my hands. <laughs> now, in relation to the writer's strike, for the first time, I knew this would happen. I think Oscar may have predicted it yesterday. For the first time since sag After went on strike in July, the Performers Union and Hollywood Studios and streamers have set a date to return to the bargaining table. Oh, that's good. That's this good. This is good. It's for all of us that love the content. Let, yeah. them, let them have it. sag After and the AMPTP will resume negotiations for a new TV theatrical contract 
Monday, October 2nd, several executives from uh, that company, the AMPTPTPP, yeah. uh, will be in attendance. Both sides said in a joint statement. Uh, the news was announced Wednesday, uh, the day that the Writers Guild broke their strike. And so that's good. That's Ended good. their strike, yeah. I should say. That's it. And now uh, we have something, a little something, something. Finally, Hans Niemann is a 20-year-old chess prodigy. Have you ever heard of him? No. Okay. No. He denies using a sex toy to beat opponents in chess. Now, when I read that headline, I'm like, hmm, what could it be? What could <laughs> it be? In an interview with uh, old Piers Morgan. Ah, Piers. He does uh, get the best guests, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. Piers Morgan uncensored. Uh, he went on the show Monday. Uh, the young grandmaster was asked if he had ever used anal beads while playing. Huh. He told uh, Piers, I can tell you no. Categorically <laughs> no. There's absolutely no evidence that I've ever cheated. So you're saying anal beads, cheating, what's going on? Uh, he is at the center of a cheating scandal that has rocked the chess world all the way back in, uh, since two, 2022 when he was accused of cheating to win games by fellow player Magnus Carlsen. Hmm. Is Must this the big. guy? Uh, that's him. That's uh, him? That's him, right, Matt? That's, it looks that's like Hans you. Hans Niemann, yes. Hans Niemann, Magnus Carlsen. Mama puts the pies out to cool. Yeah, this uh, is a big story like uh, six months ago. I it actually... is, yes. Uh, thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> well, no, no, sorry. I appreciate it. What I meant is was the cheating happened six months ago and the everybody The cheating memed. happened back in 2022. Uh, this is according to a report from CNN. Online theories subsequently spread accusing old Lars of uh, using vibrating anal beads. Ah, I'm beginning to the see match. the plot. How does that help him cheat? Helps How's him, cheating? Helps him relax. <laughs> 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 yeah. but really, seriously, I don't know enough about anal beads. The be he, uh, he, uh, well, you've he come to the right just place. Just having her say that was worth it yeah, dropping by. <laughs> uh, the... He, he would uh -huh. use the beads to receive signals, they say. Uh, in so order they're to... cordless anal beads. Oh, from someone else? Yeah, uh, Bluetoothing uh, it. Noise. Apparently, they use the to guide him on the plays he should make. These allegations originated from social media, although it's not clear where the specific source came from. I'm going to guess Lars's bum. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. really, uh, they did Don't you remember the B-plot in the show the, Qu <laughs> the Queen's Gambit? I, you know oh, what I do remember? Beads? What? I remember that scene in uh, Casino, you know, where the guy's tapping his thigh with the electric meter. Yes, exactly. want to break his hand. Anyway, uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, yes, we've all watched it, all yes. three of us. We'll tell you all about Naked Attraction. Yes. When we come back on the Mike O'Mara Show. Find the cursor. Fine, find the cursor. I, I lost my cursor today. My cursor. But I found it. You had to oh, give yeah. it one of these, and then it sort of popped up. It's like an arrow, you know, on the computer screen. Thank you for patting it. You don't, want it you don't want it to be elusive like that. No. No, you don't want that no, at all. you need your cursor, or but you'll I start cursing. I'm ah, a, you found it. I'm a cursor. Relieve, and yes, you are. Relieve and preserve your cherished memories with Legacy Box. Safely digitize your family's precious moments. It's so easy. Visit LegacyBox.com slash TMOS for an exclusive 40% discount. They handle over 15 types of analog media, including VHS tapes, Super 8mm film reels, and photo negatives. As the world's largest digitizer with a decade of experience, Legacy Box has helped over a million families relive special moments. From weddings, to Christmases, to beach trips, to school plays, and of course, <laughs> Arbor Day. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Go to LegacyBox.com. I forgot about that one. That's pretty funny. TMOS to save 40%. Buy today. Send it in when you're ready. Go to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS. That's LegacyBox.com slash TMOS. All right. I uh, took a little heat online for my inability to, uh, to find the Naked Attraction show on the app Max, but I finally found it. In fact, I found it very quickly uh, after the show yesterday. Okay. Did you spend uh, all day watching it? I spent uh, right about the same amount of time uh, you did. And Shannon says that Oscar, uh, did she, uh, you sat down with Oscar to watch a little of this last night? No. He put it on this morning 
uh-huh. like right bef- as I was like getting ready, right. b- about to walk out the door. When you saw it, did you say, what happened to the Today Show? No. <laughs> I said, you better get ready with that pen. Yes. So I was in the other room. He's like, hey, I'm, br- I'm putting on that show that, uh, that Mac's been talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so and he's like oh my god you have to come in here so i i i was like okay one second so i i go in there after like you know it probably took me 60 seconds to get in there sure by the time i get in there he's like no you took too long blah 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 like and i was like what i wanted to see some <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> because I could see like flashing of like, he was like, these people were like, seriously, I think, I, I think, yeah, I think I saw maybe like the opening or something like that. No, the whole first uh, But I didn't see any d- he did. That, well, see, he did because the first segment of the show was exclusively the lady picking out the guys. Nice. Right. And the way it works on the show, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, if you really want to watch it, I, I'm not ruining There's it There's no for way you, you can spoil the show. They show uh, the bottom half, then the middle of the torso, and then the face is revealed. Right. And I am here to tell you, um, it, maybe it's me, but I, I found myself smelling a bad smell when I watched that. I it agree. It was I agree. gross to me. It yeah. was gross. Now, here's the question. Now, you didn't see it, Shannon, no. so you would be the best person to ask about this, but- I'm looking at what appeared to be a lot of stinky guys looked Ew. like it that that looked a little off to me. Yep. And you know, it's like there was a there was a perv factor there in my opinion. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, that's the way you can call me a prude if you want, but there was nothing well they, they obviously were not burdened mm-hmm. with getting, you know, model attractive people on the show. Well, what they said, Mike, is that Every person who has been selected to stand in the pods, and there are six different pods, all different colors. Yeah, so they can eliminate each color. Yeah, they the people that were selected to be in the pods all had one feature that the contestant liked. And so, okay, there are there are other (laughs) things you can say. (laughs) Ah, 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 ah. Shannon is obsessed with the Schwanstucker. Yes. Uh uh, would I be accurate in saying that this particular lady contestant had filled out her form and requested larger appendages? I would guess. The yeah. common thread appeared to be the men all were not, uh, you know, comically porn star yeah. endowed, yeah. but they were well endowed. Yeah. And, I, and Mike, I agree with your idea about the smell that you couldn't feel. Just, they looked dirty to yeah. me. Yeah. And also. The show, I was shocked. And there's the British. Well, the British factor, of course. The lackluster host. (laughs) And the fact that it's, they, you can paint me with a broad brush anytime you like. Right. But all those contestants looked exclusively British to me. They looked very British. And I should also say that this particular competition, the production values were- lacking to a uh, certain degree. I agree. And it just, you had mentioned multiple times to the point where I was giving you a hard time about it. You had mentioned uh, real sex. Yes. And it was the exact same. I get the it's same like, feeling. You got to know the people that would do something like this. I learned this a long time ago in my radio career when we uh, did broadcasts from a nudist camp. Yes. And uh. we had, you know, nudity was a big thing on the old Don and Mike show. It, it was. really, really was. Strip trivia. We knew strip trivia. Nudity sold. We had the uh, the Naked Olympics yep. uh, down at a nudist colony, and we had nudists come in to promote it. And I'll never forget when the nudists came in to talk about their particular nudist camp. Right. It might have been promoting the Olympics, or it might have been another new. I don't know. But there we were a lot of naked lot. people. Yeah, yeah. And I learned right away that people who pursue that lifestyle are not burdened with a desire to look perfect with their bods no and it's great to have acceptance yes it's great but again it is a certain a person of a certain stripe that does that and also so i don't know if it's a person of a certain stripe. it's just i think that's everybody because like you put clothes on that one guy that got voted off by the way i lasted maybe 10 minutes okay just like you yeah where i just got sick of the 
Shannon's word that she used. Yeah. I was sick of the, the D. <laughs> Sorry. How many edits are we going to have in today's show? A couple. A couple. At least, yes. It was so fun. Yeah. It was, uh, and, and we never, I didn't even last long enough to, uh, to see the lovely ladies, and I don't think I will. Uh, I have yet to put it on for Carla to uh, have her. It was, look, if you are a heterosexual female, I think the first part of the show was designed for you, certainly not for the hetero guys out right. there. Uh, but there was just a there's, a, yeah, there's there's hair where you didn't want hair to be, and it was kind of nasty. And yeah, a lot, a lot of, of tattoos, a lot, lot of, of fire, tattoos. A lot of fire hoses, Rob. A yes. lot of fire hoses. Well, I think that that's, has to do with being British. That's the British different cities too. and different countries have different cultures. <laughs> this is true. But overall, am I leaving anything out about or do we sort of uh, see eye to eye on that? I also don't like that it's interspersed with like factoids where they say like, do you like a big ass? And yeah. then they would go to like say, people are just, you know, in ancient times, a big ass was indicative of being of able power. to carry children or and, of no, power. No, or what? no, what they said was, because I got that part. Okay. And they said a firm tush. As I think they put it on yes. the show, or bum was, was indicative of a hunter gatherer's uh, good ability to breed, <laughs> based on the thrusting ability. Okay. They did say that. Yeah, they yeah. say that 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 was that. I was, didn't care oops. for that, and also, did you didn't see it to the end because I watched. You know, I had watched the first half of an episode, finished that, and then watched one more, and I said, "I'm out." Someone enjoyed it. No, you, someone you watched two. I watched two episodes. You watched two. Did you watch? Uh, did you see any ladies? Yes. Yeah. As a and matter of fact, the same, same thing. The same. Yeah. Oh, see, not. You know, uh, it's, I watch. It's, it's people that want to get naked. Yeah, yes, Mac. Yeah, I watched four episodes. Like I, I said, I, I skimmed through it. Uh huh. And I found one attractive person that entire thing. <laughs> 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 now, but and guess what? They got voted off. Okay, but here's this, Mike. Four what, episodes, Mac. Yes, four episodes. And didn't you ha didn't you like? Oh, he he you did know, a he, hack in. Yeah, he made a VPN. He pretended a, like he's in. He did. Right, yeah, like he he's did. like in you know the UK or something. Great what Britain, a maniac! Yeah, yeah. He did. but Mike, he did. here's also what you didn't get to is the awkward, somehow supposed to be charming first date. And then oh, I never are they got naked? That far. Later. Are they no, naked no, they but no? they but both times they went to the same bar, so they must have an agreement with this bar. Is it a pub like bar? Like yeah, of a course, pub -like it's a bar. British bar, stinky urine smelling <laughs> bar. A pub? Yeah, it might have been a gastro pub, but anyway. And then it's yeah, we think we're gonna go out again. It's so weird seeing you with clothes. It's uh, you know, the whole thing reeked of that. You yeah, know, like people that don't see enough sun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was, uh, I don't know. The thing it, that was weird is right for up me. real sex. It's yeah. the same kind of vibe that the I got The thing that was that. weird for me is at the end when they rolled the credits and it said executive producer Robert W. Spiewak Sr. There it is. <laughs> HBS. <laughs> HBS down there uh, getting it done. Uh, Shannon, will mm. you, out of curiosity, uh, take in the show at all? Do you have any desire to look at it? I mean, if only to see some big swinging <laughs> But that's Thank it. You. Thanks, Shannon. That's I appreciate that. You know, it's that. better when she adds break. the adjectives, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, swing yeah. it. Yeah. Swing it. Big and uh, swing swinging. Swing it. All right. That, I got to go, folks. Okay. I got to start getting ready. Yes. She's, All right. Uh, she's rolling out now. We don't know who's coming on the show today. Oh, I know who's coming on the show. Yeah. Nikki Diamond. Oh, Nicholas. Oh, Hold on. I didn't get to sing my song. Oh, stop it. Stop no, the wait, song. No, wait. I got a different song. Okay. Go right ahead, please. Jeepers. Creepers. Where'd you get the, those peepers? Bravo. Jeepers, creepers, <laughs> where'd you get those eyes? Well, I'm Thank wondering you, if Apple. I should bleep that. Oscar That's played that. Yeah. Oscar started singing that for some reason last night, and I was like, oh, how did I forget? There you go. Oscar loves the standards. Yeah. Add it to the repertoire. He's Thanks just for like taking the time out peepers. to sit in for your hubby for a while. We appreciate that. No problemo. And, uh, Tell them to come back in for the bonus show tomorrow, will you please? No problem. Yes, that's Thank a you. beautiful baby. There Bye. she goes. Bye. That's Shannon. We'll be right back, everybody. Hey. There's a touch of fall in the air. I just bought my wife the new pumpkin spice 
Barbie. Yum. <laughs> Dressed in flannel and leggings. Come on, Barbie, let's go party. <laughs> But as you know, as the seasons change, so do the needs of your skin and your faith. Uh, Dermglow's got the whole kit for your skin's A-game. Swing by in person or hop on a virtual skin consultation. Trust me, the transformation is unreal. Hit up DermGlowSkin.com and discover what you've been missing. Lightning fast shipping, global delivery, and afterpay for your ease. Can't make up your mind? Opt for an e-gift card and be sure to tell them the 31-year-old punk Taylor Lautner yes. sent you. Yes, this as, he's been uh, in the press lately, Mike. As soon as uh, he started using DermGlow, the social media trolls stopped saying that he did not age well. <laughs> what? What the F? <laughs> uh, now he's positively glowing, and you're going to see a lot more Lautner. <laughs> God Almighty, Omera out, everybody! Yes, All right, you. I hit that little, I hit that little thing for you, Mac. Was that what I was supposed to do? I got uh, it. He's busy. Uh, not yet. All right, we're waiting uh, on our, we our had main him. man. All right, we have him. All right, Mickey, are you there? Can you hear me? There he is, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Hey, here. Couple oh. of weeks off, and now uh, you know. Sorry about that. Was our fault last week that we didn't get to you, uh, Nikki Diamond. How are you, my friend? It was not our fault. It was Oscar's fault. Let's just go ahead and let's say do it. it. Let's say Mr. it. Absolutely. South America. Okay. Yeah. I think yeah. I know what's going on here. Okay. You know. Uh, you know. You just missed his wife, who was sitting in for a few segments. She was lovely. Oh, I- very excited. Having Mr. Was... in the past, if you know what I'm saying. Look out. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Hey, I got to tell you something. I got to ask you something. Uh, Please. Mickey, this is unrelated to uh, football or anything, but, you know, surfing social media, as I often do, uh, I noticed that it just seems to me that uh, stand-up comedians uh, have been taking really lovely photographs with uh, some of their audience members. What Wonderful selfies that I've uh, seen, and uh, it, it looks like, they must have a really, really good time when they're on the road, don't they? Uh, don't they, Nikki? Well, women love funny guys, Mike. <laughs> look at your wife and look at you. So, hello. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. What oh, can we say? My <laughs> God, how you been, Nick? I'm doing well. Wearing my brand new hat. That's P as in Perump. Perump. Oh, oh it's I, a Perump merge. Kind of thought it was <laughs> yeah. Puma, but uh, that's okay. I thought it was well, a Ricky tomato, Fowler. Tomato. <laughs> yeah, the, the tomato, tomato. Uh, interesting year so far in the NFL. Amazing blowouts, uh, dominant performances by teams, and uh, tragedies, of course, with uh, Aaron Rodgers going down with the Achilles. But uh, I would say the NFL is off to a great start. It's interesting. It can be sad and tragic for some teams, but a fascinating start to the season, Nikki. It is very fascinating, and you know, the first couple of weeks, it's a feeling out process, and now you're we're truly seeing now who's great and who's awful. See Chicago, yeah. see Denver, they play each other this week. Hey, oh how about those God. Broncos? It's not just the seventy points. It's going back the week before, from the second quarter, halfway through on, they gave up thirty-two points to the Commanders. So they've given up a hundred and two points in six and a half quarters. What oh, the boy. hell's going on there in Denver? I don't know. I don't think you're supposed to have a good coach. What's happening to no, that team? I don't think they like the coach. I don't think they like the quarterback. I, it's like, you ever live in a house where your kids and your wife hit you? Maybe you have, but whatever. I'm just saying that <laughs> sounds like a tough situation. Thank you very much. All right, Nikki, let's get to this week and see what's going on in the NFL. Nikki, do you want to do AI Nikki first? Because he left me a... Yes, let's get that. AI Nikki, who is the new addition to the Nikki Diamond feature from uh, Desert Greens (laughs) in uh, Perupt. Lay it on us, Rob Spirak. Another two and one week for AI Nikki. All I do is win you money every single week, unlike that loser Nikki Diamond who bets with emotion like the stupid human that he is. Here are my week 4 picks. Adam the down. Jaguars bounce back and beat the Falcons. Sure. Take the Jags minus 3. The Colts keep the momentum going coming off the upset of the Ravens and beat the Rams. Colts oh. minus 1 is the pick. And take the Saints minus 3.5 versus the Bucks. Baker has no chance versus the Saints defense. Like it's that one. been fun TMOS but I'm starving. Heading to AI Jimmy Sirito's place for the best wings in town. Light a mark. 
That is uh, that is artificial intelligence, Nikki. And uh, now to the real deal. <laughs> yes. Real deal, an actual smart human being. Look, let's go Lions tonight. Remember last year, last game of the regular season, they went into Green Bay. They were not afraid of you, Lambeau. They beat them. They punched them in the face. They'll do the same tonight. Giving one and a half, they'll win by three or more. All right. Look, first of all, we have Sunday night game and Monday night game with these stupid New York teams, okay? We're tired <laughs> of watching these New York teams, okay? I agree. I agree. Nikki, Nikki, I'm a fan of the New York Giants. Three of the four first games have been 8.30 starts. I'm not getting any sleep. I'm with you 100%. Put them on a Sunday at 1 o'clock, for Christ's sake. Look, if they're bad, you haven't you haven't lost any sleep the next morning. Come on, exactly. people. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. But the, the, first of all, the game of the day, the, the Dolphins at the Bills. Hey, the Dolphins are 3-0. and the Bills are two and one. The Dolphins just put up seventy. How are they an underdog? They 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 played well against Buffalo last year. They're getting three points. Give me the Dolphins and the greatest offense since the Rams. And I agree. Show Absolutely agree. Yep. How about the Bears, Denver? This is a horrible team. I mean, Denver's giving up seventy points now. They're the favorite. Look, I'm against Russell Wilson. I'm taking the Bears. Give me three and a half points. I'm not gonna take a favorite with the Denver Broncos. Come on. And now the Chiefs against the Jets. It's another Wilson, Zach Wilson. I'm taking the Chiefs. I'm against the Wilsons. I'm done with the Wilson. No Owen Wilson. No Rain Wilson. No Wilson Phillips. No, no. The Flip Wilson. You're dead to me. Two. Whatever, that freaking volleyball and cast away. No more Wilsons, okay? We're going against the Wilsons all week. Anyways, <laughs> so take the Lions. I have a 3-1 last week. We're on momentum. And then we got the Dolphins plus three, the Bears plus three and a half, and the Chiefs minus nine and a half. Let's win some money, baby. <laughs> Nikki Diamond, ladies there and gentlemen. Is. That's Nikki. That's Nikki. <laughs> He just floated out of the yeah, picture. Yeah, it's always like fun when he does that. Mike, there's one thing he didn't mention. What's that? That Nikki Diamond says if you want to laugh, you can bet on New Brunswick, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Yes. The smart money is on David Keckner and Rob Mayer for the best stand-up September 28th, 29th, and 30th at the Stress Factory. Tickets available at davidkechner.com. But remember, all sales are final. Uh, that Rob Mayer, he is uh, he's a dreamboat, isn't he? Yeah, does, really he, does he show up with his uh, his fan base? I didn't realize that. Well, there was just a particular selfie that I saw over the weekend, yeah. which was uh, fascinating. He's coming off what he calls the Summer of Rob. Yeah, it's uh, pretty pretty good stuff. I really, uh, I really enjoyed watching it. And uh, he looks like he's having a great time on the road. Oh, who's this then? Could that be Oscar? No. It was <laughs> Berryville, Virginia. Oh, that's that's a good place. Home of all the scams in the United States. Uh, yeah, it was Berryville, Virginia, via uh, you know via C- Sierra Leone. That's where it came from. Marion Berryville. Uh, I think he hey, had a house there. Yeah. We talk about TV all the time, and I I just wanted to finally give you credit where credit is due. Uh, when you talk about, I talked a little bit about it this week, but yeah. the morning show on Apple Plus. Uh, just you know what, man. Jennifer Aniston, star power is movie star, star power. Movie star. And you know what? Old, I'll give, even give credit to the guy that takes any role he gets, even a commercial, old John Hamm. Yes. He's holding his own like uh, like you wouldn't believe. Pretty good and casting, I think, for do him. Do you know the name of uh, Corey on that show, the the CEO of the, uh, of the network? Because he is... In my opinion, the true you will star recognize of the his show. name because he was in uh, what was the movie about? Almost famous. He played. He is truly. Uh, oh, that's right. He played the rock star. Right? Yeah. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. He is absolutely a tour de force on this show. If you want a phenomenal, and it's really kind of a soap opera. Billy Crudup. I should have come up with that. Billy Crudup is absolutely. He plays the, Corey the Ellison. Good. Fantastic <laughs> and just non-stop and you know you feel last uh last night the new episode that i watched last yeah night, i couldn't watch it because carrie wasn't home carrie wasn't home and i can't watch it without her so don't spoil it for me tell me if you don't feel unsettled during that show okay it is that kind of show but man oh man fun 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 and i wonder uh, if know, it hits us harder for being in broadcasting as long as we it have. does uh it absolutely does because we've dealt with that world yeah and that world where ego factors so much into corporate profits it's it's very very similar and you get a certain type that uh gravitate to that type of business and i'm yeah. talking about the type that's behind the scenes sure and it's an interesting cat 
that lives in that world. But if you want to see what uh, you know, network TV may be like in its absolute worst incarnation, watch the morning and show. A beautifully on shot show and a smart show, just super smart, smart yeah. big budget, fun to watch. And uh, I hope they get set, uh, set with the uh, writers too and the actors. I hope everything gets. Yeah, I would love that. We need, we need more of that great content. It's we fantastic. Do. You have informed me. That the flip side is quite fat today. It is fat and juicy, Mike. We will have that for you when we come back on the Mike O'Mara Show. And once again, thanks to Shannon for taking some time out to sit in with us and to Nikki Diamond. We'll yep. be right back. Both great. Hey, folks, it's time to experience Dad Grass, the legal, organic way to unwind without hangovers or grogginess. Enjoy the relaxation of smokable hemp with low THC and high CBD. Explore their 100% organic pre-rolled joints for a clear-headed cannabis experience. Not into smoking? Check out Dad Grass's top-notch tinctures and gummies for a delicious euphoric mood. It's all the mellow goodness, no smoke required. And they all leave you feeling the good vibes. All Dad Grass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Plus, it's TSA approved. Right now, Dad Grass is offering our listeners 20% off their first order. When you go to dadgrass.com slash TMOS, go to dadgrass.com slash TMOS, TMOS for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com slash TMOS. Hit it! Hello! I know we talked a little bit about uh, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift already, but there's a trend on TikTok that's pretty funny where gal, gals are trolling guys. I call it uh, Travis trolling because they're saying that, did you hear that Taylor Swift pulled this guy out of total obscurity and made him famous? And the guys have to react, you know, well, he's a great NFL player, but it's just yeah. simply trolling. So here we have a couple examples of uh, gals trolling guys. Did you guys hear about that football player that like, well, like no one heard of him? And then he, he literally goes, like starts dating Taylor Swift. And like now everybody thinks they know him. He was like, he, if you know football, you know him. He was, he's a huge star. No, he's like a nobody. No, he's not. He's no one Kelsey. even knew who the, no one even knew who the guy was. Oh my gosh. Jess, oh, don't, Jess, don't say that. Oh, she put him on the map. Oh my God. Are you guys <laughs> serious? He, are he's great great voice on that guy. He's one know. of the best football players. That? He's one of the best tight ends ever. I don't think so. Oh my goodness. Are there any football players no. around here? The, guys, help me out here. They're saying that they're going to put Travis Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Come on now. Travis Kelsey's a big star. I, I, I watched that a couple times, and I do believe that he's talking about what a big star he is, but then he calls him Travis Kels. Kels? So, so I'm not sure how you big know, of a fan he is. Can I just interject one thing yeah. here? Yeah. You like, and I'm all for uh, the good, the Taylor Swift, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, la la. But isn't it the dumbing of America, right? Oh, the, yes. The, the bubblegum pop star with the big. NFL star, Lummox NFL star, you know. It's not I unlike, mean, you know, it's on. it's we we seen we've seen it before when a Hollywood darling. Of course it didn't used to be football, it would be Joe DiMaggio and know? Marilyn Monroe. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's happened before. I get it. Right. Yeah. All right, uh Mac, let's we've we've had enough Travis trolling. Mike, bear stories are great. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say that, especially if you have video and I want you to see this. They were having a picnic. To me, it looked like they were having just simple, you know, takeout food okay. and at a, at a park bench. And uh, <laughs> are they in a park? Are they, they are in, in a, a park. A woods, a woods setting? Yeah, they are, they are woods adjacent, to say the very okay. least. Mm -hmm. And they, they get an uh, unexpected guest of a bear of decent size looking for their uh, picnic basket, Mr. Ranger, sir. Okay. <laughs> and he obviously came so fast that they have to just stay there because they're afraid to move. But that is terrifying, though. It's not a big bear. It's a no, cub. No, but it's enough. But where there's a cub, there's usually a mama. Mm -hmm. And what bothers me is I think they handled it right by sitting absolutely still, and then the bear goes off. But what about the guy filming this? Yeah. What, what's up with him? How does he fit into the situation? He's filming it really, really quietly. Yeah, I Have guess. You ever, you're the greatest one I've ever seen. What? The greatest one I've ever seen is the guy is up in a hunting blind. It's hunting I, bear, Oh, I've I seen that. I've seen and that, you yes. See, you hear that thing go, 
<laughs> yes. And it comes right up nose to nose with him. It is horrifying. And, and it is a, a huge bear, unlike that one. And uh, they've got them uh, up in my area up in Maine this year. A mama and two cubs have been right around that area. And everybody's seen them up there. Really? And, yeah, you got to be careful with that. It's not a grizzly, but uh, the black bears can mess you up as well. That's, uh, that's freaky. I thought that you either do what those people were doing. Stay still. Or you, or you make a loud noise Yeah, to you, scare for black it off. bears, you so. need to scare it off. Brown bears, you cannot scare it off. You just need to go in the fetal position. But black bears, you got to scare them off. We had did a, you, uh, we had a did bear. You find, did I've, you find just, that out when you were watching uh, the Channel 4 in, <laughs> in England? Yes, when I saw the bears there. Mm-hmm. What were you going to say, Rob? I'm sorry. I was going to say we had a, a bear spotting in Leesburg about a year ago, but it was a koala. So no one was that nervous. But a bing. No, we did have a bear. And a I, I saw him. He was he was a pretty big guy. I don't have my laugh track here. I'm sorry. We'll talk about laugh tracks tomorrow. Uh, oh, uh, well, show. here we go, Mike. <laughs> a koala bear. Kind of regret everything about it. Uh, deal or no used, deal? I would have used panda. Oh, a giant panda running around. A little around more lizard. ridiculous. Yeah, it is. You know what? Mm-hmm. I doff my cap to thee. Absolutely. Uh, the only person I know who ever watched Deal or No Deal was Charlie Stuang Stabilak. He loved it. Yes. But, Mike, it's coming back, and I don't know if it's a rule that eventually all reality shows have to end up on an island, but here's Howie Mandel to pass the torch. Howie Mandel here, coming to you from an empty soundstage someplace in Hollywood. The biggest, most exciting game show ever is about to return. Think about bigger money, harrowing challenges, How, you ask? By not shooting it in a soundstage like this. The whole show will take place on an undisclosed island location a world away from civilization. Why? Why? Wait. Um, I'm a a germaphobe, people. So he's handing off the hosting. There's going to be like, uh, there'll be like bugs and snakes and stuff. I can't go. I can't do it. I can't host it. But they're going to need a host. Someone adventurous acting someone who loves games someone who's good looking like me not your average joe who is it joe manganello howie mandel now, would you host sophia deal vergara's no husband? Deal Island? ex-husband don't answer ex-husband. and here's what's weird about deal? it is that howie works with sophia on i think america's got talent and they're divorced now, so it could be some awkward stuff. Or maybe NBC inked this deal before the divorce. I don't know. Well, but, and also divorced people can be friends, right? Yes, they can I mean, be, yeah. I, I don't know how contentious it was. I didn't think it was a real easy one. I, I, I didn't for, think for it was some a reason, real easy yeah, one. it seemed a little tough. But let's get to the bottom line here. Why is Deal or No Deal, the world's stupidest show, being put on an island? Well, at the same time, though, when you're going to introduce a host like that, yes, it's a total letdown. You don't of bring course. in, you don't bring in the, uh, you know, the the second tier. What show is he on? True Blood or something like that? If what that, was that? I think he's most. I mostly Mac, know. Do you him. remember what show he was on? I do not. No, see, nobody knows no. the dude. He's famous for being a husband. You know, would have made it really special. What? That's why the show will be hosted by. Travis Kelsey. See, I'd watch that. Go and for the hot guy exactly. of the moment. That's uh, what you do. Mike. He was on Magic Mike. Magic Mike the movie. Right. Yeah. That's I'm going to watch that after I watch Naked Attraction tonight. <laughs> Very good. Yes. Uh, uh, all penis. You know, Mike, I hate pickleball. I think you have a sort of an anti-pickleball bone in your body as well. So, I heard it the other day down here, and it's all over the place down here in Southwest Florida, but I will tell you the other day. I would have liked to witness it because it was going. Well, Mike, it, it sounded. I've heard so many different things about pickleball. I have never had the pleasure. Well, you'll see some of it in this video. In California, uh-huh. an arsonist went to a pickleball complex and burned down the shed, destroying tens of thousands of dollars worth of pickleball equipment. Um, they're obviously in a pickle. Size of a tennis court. But don't let appearances fool you. The Santa Monica pickleball community is in a pickle. Around 1 a.m. Monday morning, (laughs) fire broke out at Memorial Park, specifically the pickleball equipment storage area and a nearby fence. 
All of the equipment was destroyed, apparently worth thousands of dollars. Authorities call the case a suspected arson. It's still subject to an open investigation, but you it'd be a pretty far reach to call it anything but arson. Just makes you wonder like who would do it and what their intentions are. Like, pickleball players. Okay, do they not like pickleball? You know, a just disgruntled messaging with player. some of my yeah. friends who play here. They just can't believe what happened. Um, who would do such a thing? The burning question reveals underlying tensions in the world of sports, recreation, and parks. Some people don't like the pickleball community for several reasons. Uh, tennis instructors now don't give as many lessons at Memorial as they used to in the past. Uh, tennis players have less Jesus access. Christ. Also, there's some private um, pickleball players who don't like the club because we provide public play for everybody. <laughs> Mac, your brother is a tennis instructor, right? Yeah, he burned it down. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> you know what? If this is what, and first of all, thousands of dollars, what? The rackets? Yeah. Little and, pieces and of wood? Balls. And the ball? Balls. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Come on. I have to, I have to at this point quote my best friend, Brad Rosenberg, Mike. Yes. <laughs> Who Brad. would do this? Who would do this Who horrible crime? Who would do this horrible thing? I think the professional tennis players don't care for pickleball players. I don't know. I, You know what? We've got both where I hang out, so, uh, you know, they seem to coexist. That's very weird. Okay, we're going to close with this. This is a comic, and, you know, everybody is talking about uh, Kelsey and Swift. And mm -hmm. this is an interesting case because what she does is sort of finds a pathway that she thinks Taylor is working. So uh, actually, what she suggests is probably, her name is Hannah Burner. This is probably a foregone conclusion. I see Taylor Swift. <laughs> no, like, I feel like it's her world and we're just living in it. This is what's wild about Taylor Swift right now that I'm impressed by. The range of the type of men that she likes. Joe Alduino, whatever, he <laughs> looks like a basket weaving Mormon. <laughs> then Matt Healy is a cigarette. <laughs> and then Travis Kelsey looks like, yes, he looks like he fails Algebra 2 and pushes both of them in a locker. <laughs> and now I'm worried that the only thing left for her is Pete Davidson after this. And I'm upset. My I'm God. worried, I'm upset, but all there we roads go. lead to Pete. All roads Pete. lead to Pete, Mike. Oh, man. She didn't put one fat guy in there. It would have been funnier if she used a fat guy. That's but true. Nobody's fat in, in celebrity culture anymore. Uh, that's you it. You got to look get back, Mike. You got to look back to Mark Addy. Mark Addy, yeah. <laughs> and most of them die. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's it. We got to get out of here. We'll be back with a bonus show tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell your friends to do it as well. Want to thank Shannon Zabias yes. for coming by. Also, uh, Mike McIntosh, Pony Boy Matt Bloom, and for Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, Michael Mara saying so long, everybody. Ciao, ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Michael Mara bonus show. Get it at michaelmarashow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You know the thing about a shark? He's got lifeless eyes. Black eyes. Look at doll's eyes. Just swallow it whole. Shouldn't be a problem for you.